My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declare unto them, for the spirit of whoredom hath caused them to err, and they have gone whoring from under their God. So this society which degenerated has reached a stage where it's only the influence of rogue spirits, that their minds have been affected. You see, they're asking counsel, they're worshipping their staffs, they're worshipping inanimate objects, because they're under the influence of the spirit of whoredom. Uh, totally rampant, deviant behavior. <coughs> <clears throat> as a result of yielding to this influence. The same thing is happening to our society. Satan, seeing an opportunity, directs rogue spirits into whether it's the life of a society or the life of an individual. Principle teaches, <coughs> principle, scripture teaches the activity of the rogue spirit in the life is defined as a curse on the life. So the definition of a curse coming upon somebody is the activity of a rogue spirit in that life. <coughs> the person does something which opens them up to Satan's direction of a renegade spirit <coughs> who then begins to become active and cause disruptions, distortions, maladies, affliction. <coughs> These are called curses. Turn to Malachi, <coughs> in the third chapter. You want verses 8 to 9? an example of this. <coughs> Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And tithe is an offering. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now we find what is the nature of the curse. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So this rogue spirit called <coughs> the devourer is destroying their crops because they have failed to pursue <coughs> what was given to them to do. In other words, they failed to do what was right. And in doing this, they brought themselves into a situation where their lives were open for a rogue spirit to enter in and began to curse what would be blessings become curses at that point. This is true in the totality of our society today. You look at the lives of the people. They're undergoing curses. Turn to Deuteronomy, <coughs> 28th chapter. Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 to 18. <clears throat> but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee. So the curses are basically the activities of rogue spirits operating in the society. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, cursed shalt thou be in the field, 
Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. <coughs> Curses are coming upon our land in virtual multitudes, droughts, <coughs> firestorms, epidemics of maladies coming upon the people. These are the activities of rogue spirits in the society. Because the society has opened itself up, become a target of <coughs> the principalities who are directing these rogue spirits into the lives of the individuals. Everywhere you go, there are curses. People are suffering. You drive on the highway, you see these people that are absolutely, unbelievably unrestrained. Uh, they're operating out of uh, abnormal <coughs> behavior. Uh, every aspect of society, <coughs> public, private, <coughs> educational, political, economic, social, you name it, undergoing curses, 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 demonic activity. <coughs> Now, Scripture teaches, in addition to this, the Luciferians used the darkness element to blind men to the activities of the rogue spirits in their lives. They become oblivious to the fact that their lives are out of control or that <coughs> it's not normal for these things to be happening. Uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 to 3. Second chapter? And you have been quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So what he's saying here is this activity is so ingrained in society that people are blinded by the darkness element to think that this is just normal behavior. Only when you become regenerate and you're taken out of it can you begin to see it for what it is. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation, our lifestyle, in time past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So he's saying everybody is blinded for a certain time, but God in his wisdom made provision for those that he called to one day be taken out of it, to one day, <clears throat> while they're in it, not to be overcome by it. God decreed, God put his seal of protection upon the elect. And though there's a time when the scripture says we were separated in trespasses and sins, we didn't know any different. <coughs> we were blind, just like everybody else, this is what Paul is talking about. God still had his hand of protection upon us. So that when we're extricated out of this, <coughs> the darkness element no longer can affect us we can see it for what it is, but everybody that's still in it can't. <coughs> you can see the effect of curses on lives, and if you approach those people, miserable as they are, negative as they are, <coughs> to them it's just normal. You know, they're, they're enduring the pain. <coughs> or they're thinking that um, someday it's going to get better. Or if they do this or if they do that, they can um, get back uh, on their feet or establish equilibrium. Everybody is engaged. Satan gives everybody a false light to illuminate the lie that they're living in, which they call life. And people are like a little ferret on the wheel. They're running and running and running and running and running and not accomplishing anything. But they think that just down the corner, or just a little while 
you know, if I keep in going in this direction, and at the same time, <clears throat> the rogue spirits are feeding off of their energy, feeding them and sucking them dry, and bringing about whatever the condition it is that they've opened their life to, that would ultimately take the person down and out. <clears throat> Turn to 2 Corinthians, 4th chapter, verses 3 to 4. an example of that. Second Corinthians 4th chapter 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. <clears throat> they can't see the situation for what it is because they've been blinded by the darkness element. <clears throat> Their lives are manipulations by whatever the rogue intelligence is that's in them and they're on their way to destruction. <clears throat> Gospel of John, 12th chapter, verse 37 to 43. We see this in a whole society. John 12, 37 to 43. <clears throat> but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. But he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. So Satan uses the darkness element to blind people from being brought into the night. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. So we see the whole society, Isaiah says in about the third chapter, the whole society was in darkness. Jesus was a light. But even being a light, there were those who loved the darkness. And they didn't want anything to do with the light. Verse 41, These things saith Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. So they had the light come in, the realization of who he was. But notice, Satan had a backup plan. Notice what it says. Many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. He used intimidation here. I know who he is. But if I confess him, then I'll lose my position and I won't be able to uh, <clears throat> anymore uh, have the freedom that I have in society. The Satan uses manipulation consistently mm -hmm. to keep people from progressing toward the truth. <clears throat> the darkness element used by the <clears throat> principalities, the spirits that are attached to the lives of the people you see every single day. Every single day. 24-7. <clears throat> They're being worked on. What you're seeing literally are people dying before your eyes. <clears throat> because if they don't see the light, they're on a path to destruction. Satan's keeping them that way. <clears throat> That's why the scripture tells us <clears throat> <clears throat> that basically 
man <coughs> is uh, without hope. The only hope he has is in Christ. And when he rejects that hope, then there is no hope for him. But Satan <coughs> will engage in a multitude of false paths for people to travel on, to keep them from traveling on the one and only true path. Christians, the scripture tells us, <coughs> are going to be deceived in the myriads, the majority. They're going to have doctors come upon them and they're going to have renegade spirits feeding off of them by the time <coughs> we get to the era of the rapture, such that they won't be able to see. And it's happening now. Uh, if you look around at the church, they dying. It's not accidental. It's that they have rejected the commitment to know that, that they should engage in. They have rejected the counsel of God. And Satan has come in and he has filled <coughs> the church world with deceptions and deviations. And it's only the remnant that stand firm that will be able to endure all this and come through. The majority are going to miss the rapture because it will not have been ready to go through the tribulation.